Microplastics and nanoplastics, are they going to wipe out life as we know it on planet Earth? This is a rational question. We currently don't know the answer to this question uh, because we don't have enough research on this topic yet. In this video, I'm going to go through just how ubiquitous is uh, microplastics and nanoplastics in your environment. And then we're going to talk about what you can do about it. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about a scam that I don't want you to fall victim to. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician. Let's talk about nanoplastics and microplastics. So you may have seen a recent news article saying that in the arterial plaques inside of people's body, living people, they found plastic. Plastic particles, microplastics, nanoplastics. Uh, and so I was like, what? Now they did not say that the plastics had caused these arterial plaques, only that the plastics were in the plaques. And so that made me ask the question, just where else are these plastics? And so in looking into this, I found that uh, plastics like this have been found in uh, human blood, in human bowel movements, in human urine, in, in virtually every human organ that we've looked, we've found micro and nanoplastics. We have not found any in the human brain yet, to my knowledge, but there has been a study in animals showing that micro nanoplastics can actually cross the blood-brain barrier in mice. They found these plastics in the brains of mice. Now, when you look at amphibian research, and other animal research, they're already finding harm, especially to amphibians. This is a big deal. Um, these micro and nanoplastics and all the chemicals that they leach out are causing health problems in the amphibians and in other animals. But there's not a lot of research in humans as to whether this is bad for us or not, even though we've known for a few years now that they are in the human body. They have been found in the human kidney, the human heart. They have been found in the human intestine. They have been found in the human placenta. Yes, that nasty looking thing that surrounds an unborn baby. Also, they found micro nanoplastics in amniotic fluid surrounding the unborn baby. There was a recent research study that showed that when cells undergo mitosis and split apart into two new cells, each one of them had micro and nanoplastics inside the cell, and when they split, each one took some of their own plastics with them. So are these nanoplastics in your cells as well? The answer is almost undoubtedly yes. Yes, they are. Uh, the original study documenting this was performed on eight people in, back in 2018 and published in 2019. I got a link down in, in the show notes to the, that research study and lots of other research about micro and nanoplastics. They, uh, all eight people had microplastics in their poop. And so that was when, to my knowledge, this was first recorded as a thing. Since then, scientists have been on a mission to see where, just where all in the human body can we find micro and nanoplastics. So the answer is effectively everywhere. Now, I don't want you to freak out. I don't want you to panic. I want you to understand this is a big damn problem and it's gonna take all of us working together to do something about this. Currently, uh, it seems that our, our Congress and Senate here in the United States doesn't really seem to be interested in this. Um, we do know that huge companies that make these plastic chemicals like uh, ExxonMobil, uh, like uh, Dow, Corning, uh, Bayer, Monsanto, they have lobbyists that are lobbying the congressmen and senators, uh, and I don't think that they're lobbying them to make them worry about it. I think they're lobbying them to say, ah, it's no big deal, don't worry about it, right? But I think we all need to be worried about it. Do I think it's going to wipe out life on this planet? Probably not. Do I think it's going to cause severe endocrine problems in all animals, including human beings, do I think it's going to cause fertility problems in all animals, including human beings? Yes, most definitely. So now the question becomes, what can we do about this? Well, I want to, first of all, help you to understand very clearly, you're, you cannot get rid of all the micro and nanoplastics in your environment or in your body. That is, at this point, impossible. Uh, Everything is in plastic. Plastic bottles, plastic jars, aluminum cans lined with plastic, plastic bags, 
uh, paper lined with plastic that is wrapped up uh, your hamburger at the fast food joint. All these are sources of micro and nanoplastics. If you wear synthetic fiber clothing, yeah, it's full of micro and nanoplastics. And every time you wash and dry them, every time you take them out of the closet to put them on, there is a cloud of micro and nanoplastics that you are breathing in. They've, they have been found in the human lung and in the human heart as well. So what do we do? Well, you cannot eliminate your exposure. You cannot eliminate the micro and nanoplastics in your body. All we can do is minimize our future exposure. So starting from this moment, you can minimize your further exposure to micro and nanoplastics. Now we do know that the human body is capable of excreting them through feces, through urine, uh, through the biliary system, which then comes out the lower end of the gastrointestinal tract, and perhaps through sweating. We know that these are ways that we can get rid of at least some of the micro and nanoplastics. So what can you do to minimize your future exposure? Because that's literally all you can do. Here's what you can do. The first uh, two principles I think are the most important principles of all. The first and most important principle is to eat only real, whole, unprocessed food. Okay? Meat and vegetables, nuts, eggs in an unbroken shell. These are the things that, that are going to have the least amount of micro and nanoplastics. Now, are they going to be free of them? Nope. Nope, because they're in the, the flesh of the animal and the plant already. They're already there. But the more processing that food undergoes the, at, the, at the food factory, the more micro and nanoplastics it's going gonna, it's gonna to have. This is common sense. Everything in a factory is plastic. Plastic tubing, plastic boards, plastic tables, plastic wrap, plastic everything. So the more processed your food and drink is, the more micro and nanoplastics it's going to have. That's just, that's inarguable, okay? So eat only real, whole, unprocessed food. That's going to greatly decrease your further exposure. And give your body time to excrete the micro and nanoplastics that are already in there. Now, do I think you're going to be able to excrete them all? No, I do not. I think some will be with you for the rest of your life however short and miserable that life may be. Hopefully that's not the case, but it, yeah, they're gonna be in there for the rest of your life. They are everywhere. We found them in Antarctica. We found them, found them in the Arctic Circle. We found them literally everywhere we've looked. They are everywhere. So what can you do at home and in your life to minimize them? Eat real, whole, unprocessed food, okay? So I think that the best option is solid chunks of meat that have not been processed. Keep in mind that ground, ground beef or minced beef, minced meat, uh, is ground with metal blades, not plastic blades in most cases. So I think that's probably fine as well. Eggs in the uncracked shell, uh, whole pieces of seafood. I think these are gonna have the least burden of micro and nanoplastics that you put into your body. If you have a plastic cutting board at your house, throw it away by a wooden cutting board. If you have plastic dishes and plastic cups, throw them away. We know, and I've got videos on this channel uh, about the phthalates, the, the um, different chemicals that can leach out of plastics, BPS, BPA, and scores of other chemicals that are endocrine disruptors. They mess with your hormones. Uh, I think this is absolutely one of the reasons why we're seeing increased infertility rates, why we're seeing lower levels of testosterone in men. I think this has, is playing a large role in that. Now, so get rid of the plastic cutting board, get rid of all your plastic dishes, plastic spoons and forks, no bueno, no. Get real metal fork spoons and knives. Get glass dishes, get metal containers, only put your food in that. Never ever eat or drink food that is in hot plastic. Never do that. More and more I want you to switch to natural fiber clothing. Cotton, wool, other natural fibers. Anytime an article of clothing contains synthetic fibers, that's plastic. 
That's exactly what that is. That came from the plastic factory. And every time you take that shirt out of the closet, poof, there goes some micro and nanoplastics. When you dry it in the dryer and take it out, you're inhaling a literal hurricane of micro and nanoplastics. Okay? When you, and like I said earlier, these have been found in the human lung. You can absorb them if they are small enough. Absorb them through your lungs into the bloodstream. Okay? So get rid of plastic everything. Never buy any food or liquid in a plastic container. And you're saying, what the hell? How am I possible? I know, I know, I know. I don't want you to freak out. I don't want you to panic. But all you can do is minimize your, your risk going forward from this day. You cannot eliminate it. You're going to inhale and ingest micro and nanoplastics. That's just going to happen. Uh, thanks to the big corporations and the government that was looking the other way, lobbyists, uh, this is, it's everywhere. Literally, you can't go live anywhere on the earth that is not saturated in micro and nanoplastics. So these are the steps that you can take to minimize future exposure. Another route of exposure is cosmetics. Most all of the mainstream cosmetics contain micro and nanoplastics. Uh, and I'm not so worried about you absorbing them through your skin. The stratum corneum probably makes that highly unlikely. But you're gonna have, your lipstick has micro and nanoplastics. You're going to eat some of that. It's going to come off. Uh, the, the, my, the, the makeup on your face is going to slough off. It's going to get on your fingers, then in your mouth. You're going to ingest that. It's going to get in your eyes. If the particles are small enough, you'll absorb them. Okay, through the mucous membranes. Absolutely, that's going to happen. Another recent article said that if you boil your water, especially if you have hard water, which means high in mineral content, that the micro and nanoplastic particles will actually adhere to the minerals, and then that'll adhere to the side of the container as it cools. That'll greatly decrease the amount of micro and nanoplastics that you drink. Uh, another great way to combat this is to buy reverse osmosis filter and all the water that you drink and cook with needs to go through the RO filter. We have one in our house. We don't drink any water that did not come from the reverse osmosis. We don't use any water to cook with that didn't come from there. We are increasingly buying our bottle, bottle water in glass bottles. Um, now, wh what about at the bottling plant? Are they using plastic tubing? Probably. Can you do anything about that currently other than bitch, moan, and whine? Not really. Uh, we could start calling all of these corporations out on social media and saying, hey, what are you doing to combat micro and nanoplastics? I think that's something productive that you could do. We could all call our congressman and senator and say, hey, is this not a big deal? We already know it affects the reproductive life of amphibians. Does it also affect humans? We don't currently know. Don't you think we need to research that and maybe start to take some precautions? So these are the things you can do. Now, let me tell you about the scam that I've already seen popping up on the Internet. And that's products that people are trying to sell you that will get rid of the micro and nanoplastics from your body. This can be an herbal blend. This can be supplements. This can be a machine you soak your feet in or, or any number of different things. All of these things are bullshit. None of them have been shown to work. None of them have been proven. None of them have any research backing them up whatsoever. Now, maybe five or 10 years from now, we'll have a product you can buy that will get a lot of the extra nano and microplastics out of your body. But currently, there's no such thing. So when you see that ad, you can safely scroll by knowing that that's, that's just a waste of money. That's not going to help you at all. The only hope you have is to minimize your, your future ingestion and inhalation and for your family to keep your family from inhaling or ingesting these micro and nanoplastics. I'm not trying to freak you out or panic you. I'm trying to prepare you. You can expect more and more news articles to come out in the, in the future years saying, OMG, micro and nanoplastics are everywhere. And indeed they are. The question is, how can you minimize your future exposure and how can we minimize the risk to our health and to our fertility, to our testosterone levels with these micro nanoplastics filling our body, being in literally every organ in the human body? That's the questions you need to be asking. And then also, 
joining up, forming a group and talking to the powers that be and say, hey, stop polluting the environment with micro and nanoplastics. I'm going to put all the research that I used to make this video down in the show notes. I encourage you to keep researching this issue. We don't know how big of a deal it is. It could turn out to be like, man, it's not too bad, or it could turn out to end all life on this planet. Literally, it could, it could range somewhere on that spectrum. We currently have no freaking clue where we fall on that spectrum. I hope this video helped. If it did help you understand this complex issue, please consider sharing it on your social media to help other people know this is a big deal and we need to do something about this. This is Dr. Barry. See you next time.